Okay, back again. All right, so here we are. Now we're talking about the CMA portion. We've gone over a little bit about the one minute presentation. We talked about the beginning of the CMA presentation and the rationale behind it. And now we're gonna go ahead and get deep into the CMA presentation itself, okay? So now we talked about the last line we said was the purpose of the comparative market analysis was, was to determine the value of the home in the eyes of a buyer. And Mr. Seller, are you familiar with how a buyer determines value? All right. Now, at this point, remember that they think that they do, but now, regardless of what they tell you here, yes, we do, no, we don't, you know, whatever it is, then, then you go ahead and you complete the sentence by saying, well, naturally, you know, then you understand that buyers determine value by comparison shopping, okay? They determine the value, remember, keep saying value, 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 the value of your home, okay, all right, they determine the value of your home by looking at the price of your home, okay, based on its features and benefits, features and benefits, and compare it to similar homes, all right, that are on the market or have recently sold. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, they take the features and benefits of your home and the price, compare the features and benefits of your home to the features and benefits of homes that are currently on the market or have recently sold. Does that make sense? Okay. So far, so good. Everybody, you know, should be all on the same page here, unless they're a head of cabbage. I mean, they should be able to understand this part, okay? Now, we talked also about how in the Mike Ferry script itself, it talks about cars and, you know, and, and CD players and fancy rims and how in Tucson, you probably ought to change that to say something like a GPS system or, you know, uh, fancy upgrades of some sort like that, okay? <clears throat> so, for example, if you had a car, okay, um, let's say you're going to purchase a brand new car and it was going to cost, I don't know, $30,000, okay? Now, the reason why you say it like this is, you know, I don't know, like $30,000, is it personalizes it. It doesn't sound like you're going off the script. You're going to have to repeat this script over and over and over again. You're going to have to write it out, okay, continually while you're trying to learn this script until you memorize it and internalize it. The only reason why I know it is because I've done it so many times. So the thing is, for example, if you're going to purchase a car, all right, for $30,000, when a one dealership has the car, you know, for $30,000, all right, and then another dealership has the same car, same everything, okay, for $30,000, but it had, you know, I don't know, let's say it has a, you know, a GPS, all right, and uh, I don't know, maybe a leather interior. See how that kind of comes across as, you know, like you've been thinking about it, you know, it's just something off the top of your head, right? I've said this a hundred times, but this is exactly what I say every time, and this is, is acting, okay? Now, if they're both for 30000 and this car has no CD player or no GPS, no leather, all right? But they're both 30000 which is more valuable, all right? Make sure you say more valuable, all right? And you say, well, I don't know, the one with the stuff. Exactly. And why is that? Well, it's because it's got GPS, got leather. That's right. It's got more bang for the buck. Okay? Now, you might get that one smart Alex seller, seller who's going to say, well, you know, it just depends on what they want. You know, it depends on, you know, I, I, I just get what I want and I don't, oh, oh. you know, they, they try and they play that off because they know what's coming. All right? They're smart. They say, well, you know what? I understand completely. But what do you think? most people would do, you know, those other people. What would most, because everybody, when they're like, well, I, I just, you know, it depends on what they want. You know, when they get into that mode, all right, they think they're better than everybody else. They think they're smarter than everybody else. So you want to play to that a little bit. You say, well, yeah, you know, I get it. You know, and I, I agree. Don't argue with them. I agree. You know, but, you know, what do you think most people do? You know, those other people, what do you think most people would do? Now, you've played to their ego, all right? Oh well, yeah. You know, most people, they're you know, they're idiots. They're not like me. They'll they'll, they'll pay for that. They'll, they'll pay for that. Right. Exactly. Okay. So now, but what if the first dealership, okay, the one without the stuff, takes their car 
and puts it on the market, let's say at, oh, I don't know, 20,000 or maybe 25. Okay, which car would you buy then? Well, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd still pay, you know, I'd still pay for more. Ridiculous, okay? You can get a Tom Tom for 500 bucks. You and I both know he's going for this one every day of the week. But he knows what's coming on and he's gonna try and play it off. So here's where you just simply say, yeah, you know, I, I get it. But again, what do you think most people are gonna do? Well, most people, are, you know, they're gonna do that. Right, okay? But m most people are gonna pay for this. You're right, okay? So why do you think that? Well, it's cheaper. It's twenty thousand bucks cheaper. That's right. Absolutely. And and you could get, you know, a Tom Tom for five hundred bucks, and you may not care for leather because it's hard to take care of. Right. So you're you're playing along with this, okay? Most people they'll probably say, well, the twenty thousand bucks. Exactly. And why is that? Well, because it's ten thousand dollars less, precisely. So you can see then that if you want to increase the value, okay, if you want to increase the value of something. You either have to A, lower the price, or B, have more features and benefits for the same price. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, does that make sense is a great way to put this. All right. So this is the way that you deliver the script. You say, okay, well, wait, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, so if there was two cars for sale, one car for 30000 at dealership A, one car for dealership B, but it had a GPS and maybe some leather interior or something like that. Okay. Which car would you buy? Well, we'd buy the one with the leather and the GPS. Right, and why is that? Well, because, uh, you know, it's uh, got the leather and the GPS. Exactly, it's more bang for the buck. Now, let's pretend that dealership A, the one without the stuff, put their place on, uh, their, their car on sale for say, I don't know, 20,000, maybe 25,000. Which car would you buy then? Well, you know, I suppose I would probably buy the $20,000 one. Exactly, and why is that? Well, because, you know, it's 10,000 bucks less. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you may not want the GPS or, or maybe, you know, you could go ahead and buy it for 500 bucks on a TomTom Tom or something, right? Right. Okay, great. So you can see then if you want to increase the value of something, you either have to A, now this is where you go ahead and you have your hands. Okay. Visuals are always good. Either A, drop the price or B, have more features and benefits for the same price. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. Okay, great. So unless you're planning on adding anything to your house, are you? Most of the time they're going to say no. Then price is all we need to talk about. Can I show you what I mean? Okay. Now, what you've done here is you've taken away this, this nonsense about how they've done so much great stuff to their house, okay? And their house is beautiful, great, fantastic. But that is no different than the GPS and the leather. This is the features and the benefits here, okay? Now, when you start making this example effectively, then you're going to cut the legs out from underneath them when they start trying to make this argument about, well, I've got a, a lazy Susan in my living room or whatever. Okay. So you, you cut that objection right out, right from the beginning. All right. Now, so unless you plan on adding anything to the house, more features and benefits. Okay. Are you? Well, no, we're not. Okay. Then price is what we need to discuss. Can I show you what I mean? Yeah. Okay, great. No problem. Now, in your actual listing presentation, okay, you've already gone ahead and you've prepared three actives and three souls, all right? Do not get five million comps, okay? Look, think about it this way. The people that you're talking to most of the time, all right, are not all that savvy when it comes to real estate. And when you show them six, seven, eight, nine solds and six, seven, eight, nine actives, they're going to heads going to swim. It might even explode and get blood all over your suit. It's a pain to clean up. Trust me. Okay. The fact is that you want to keep it simple. Keep three actives and three solds. Now on our multiple listing service, okay, I go ahead and I print out the color version. Now I just uh, wanted to be, you know, uh, paper conscious here and I just uh, had a, an old one laying around. But you go ahead and you lay out, all right, the three actives and three souls. Now, do this one at a time, okay? Don't print out 
and lay them all out all at once okay because this is going to be they're going to be paying attention to everything else and trying to dissect what you've done as opposed to listening what you just to say all right so you say okay well mr seller you know this home is just like yours okay now pretend that this is the table okay here they are here you are okay Mr. and Mrs. Seller, this home is just like yours. Take it, push it across the table to them. How many, you know, what's the address? Are you familiar with this property? Okay. You take your pen, you point to the address, and you say, you know, this home's just like yours. Okay. This is over here on Bonanza. All right. How many bedrooms does this have? Point to it on the multiple listing service. If you want to be extra special good, highlight the, the bedrooms, highlight the baths and all this. Let them say it, okay? Now, I can't emphasize how important this is. When you're laying out that one sheet of paper at a time and you're pointing it, pointing it, pointing it, and pointing it like that, okay, they will focus on one thing at a time. If you lay out, all right, what most realtors do is they will lay out all three, okay? And what happens is when they lay out all three, the people will then go ahead and start dissecting everything. And they'll say, well, this house, oh, that place was a, that place was a divorce. And, and, and this one was a, a foreclosure. It was a piece of crap. It was nothing like mine. You know, when you're talking about this one over here, I don't want your head over here. I can't handle all that at once. I want to handle one property at a time. So we're having this one property out. Mr. Mr. Seller, this is over on, on Bonanza Street. Are you familiar with this property? Oh, well, uh, no, actually I'm not. Okay, were well, you familiar with the subdivision? Oh yeah, that's the same subdivision. Okay, good. How many bathrooms does this have? Let them answer. Uh, three, okay. And how many bedrooms? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, how many bathrooms? Two, okay, great. And how much are they asking for this home? Uh-huh. Okay, great. And look how long it's been on the market. 50 days. Wow. And you need to be in Tuscaloosa by April. Holy cow. We can't wait that long. Let it hang. All right. When they say the price, when they say the bedrooms and baths and the days on market, it goes through their head. Okay. They look at it, they say it, they understand it. If you say it, you point it out, it's a three bedroom, two bath, and it's 1,450 square feet, and it's 119, and it's been on the market for 77 days, okay? All they're doing, I guarantee you, their eyes are right here at the picture. That's the only place their eyes are. You can point all over here but they will only pay attention to the picture. Watch their eyes, okay? But when you direct them to say it, how many bedrooms, how many baths, how many square feet, what price are they asking, when do they need, you know, how long did it take to sell? That's going to cause them to interact with you, all right? If they're not interacting and answering questions at this point, you are in a heap of trouble. Okay, because now their mind is wandering about, oh my goodness, I got to take the dog out. I got to meet my sister for lunch, you know, all this other stuff. Keep their mind focused on the game. All right. Then once you finish with that comp, pull it to the side. Okay, take it, pull it over here by you, face down, upside down. That one is over. We're not going to talk about that one no more. Okay, pull out the next one. Yeah, this house, and this one's over here on Harrison, okay? Are you familiar with this home? Well, no, I'm not, okay. Uh, are you familiar with the neighborhood? Oh yeah, same subdivision, okay, great. How many bedrooms? How many baths? How many square feet? How much are they asking? And look how long it took them. They're still not sold. They're still active, right? They're, these people are still in fantasy land, okay? And you need to be in Tuscaloosa by April. Yikes, okay, we can't do that. Take that one. And put it over here, upside down, face down. Now, this one is the third one. Are you familiar with this one? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that's Bob's house. Okay, great. How many bedrooms? Three bedrooms, two baths. Uh huh. And how many square feet? And what's the price? And look how long. Uh huh. How many? Oh well, this house here, this one is a foreclosure. And Bob, you know, the place is a dump. Oh, I understand. Okay, this house is not as good as yours, you know, or whatever. You want to make the judgment call on here based on the pictures that you looked at already, okay? Because you've previewed these homes. Ideally, if you can preview them face to face, take a look at the house, the interior smell like cat piss or whatever, that's great. But if you don't have a lot of time, then you need to look at the pictures on the interior photographs, if nothing else. It's always a good idea to go ahead and make sure those are also uploaded, okay? So make sure that you get those uh, print out all the active, um, sorry, all the photographs that they have on there. So if they say, oh, well, that was a piece of shit. So, okay, great, no problem. Well, check it out. This one here, this kitchen here, they redid it. You would be shocked to see how smart they think they really are. But then when faced with the photographic evidence of what it is, uh, then the story changes. Okay, you'll be shocked to see how often that happens. Now, now that you've gone through all your actives, okay, reiterate that this is fantasy land. Okay, take it face down right here. Same thing goes with souls. Okay, you're doing the same procedure, bedrooms, baths, how long has been on them, or how many square feet, what they're asking price. Look what they sold it for, and look how long it took to sell. Okay, this home's just like yours. You do that the same way you did the others. You put them face down right here. Now, you've gone through all of them, okay? Now, it's time for you to go ahead and take all of these and lay them out. Actives, go on top. If their home was listed before, put the old listing right here. Sold, 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 okay? Active, active, active subject okay solds you say okay guys look this is reality and this is fantasy land remember how we talked about it before now as far as price is concerned you want to set the least expensive home on their far right uh, the far left and the most expensive on the far right okay the purpose is it's 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 a, uh, a progression, okay? People read from right to left. Oh, I'm sorry, from left to right, okay? So when they read, they're looking at the lower price that's closest to them. The lower price is what's going to help you, okay? If you put the higher price here, guess where their mind is going to think first? You're exactly right. It's going to think the higher price. So if you put down the lower price on the left-hand side, this should be, okay, the closest to them should be the lowest price you have of all six. The one that's closest to them is going to have the lowest price. It's going to be the first one they see. What do you think the odds are that they will give you that lower price if it's the thing that's closest to them and the less price, the first one they see? It's going to be pretty good. There's a whole psychology here, okay? Now, now you've gone through all of this, okay? You've got it all right in front of them. Now, you've talked about how long it's gonna take. Each one of these is say, you know, they're saying they need to move by April. You're finding out that these homes here are selling in 35 days and they're selling for about 115. This guy, he wants 130, okay? You and I know that he needs to be around 115, okay? So, Mr. Seller, what price, this is number 14 on your script, what price do you feel we should use, okay, to create value, remember, we're hitting that word value again, not price, to create value in the eyes of a buyer? And then shut up, okay? Don't say anything what price do you feel we should use to create value in the eyes of a buyer to get them to buy your home as opposed to the competition 
and is shut up. The first one who talks here loses, okay? Now, what you wanna do, I know it's hard, but shut your mouth, smile. What do you think? And then just shut up. They will tell you what they think. Now, if they're a smart aleck and they say, well, what do you think? Okay, no problem. Well, based on what I'm seeing here, the market, not me, the market, the market seems to say that your home should sell for 115. Mr. Seller, now that you've seen these prices, I'm going to recommend a price of 115. Will you list your home with me at that price today? Then just smile, like you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, like 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 this is a foregone conclusion. Like this is something that's going to happen anyway. Now we've gotten to the point. Now it's time. Now we've made everything that's needed to be said. Now it's time for you to go ahead and sign. Let's just get this going. You know, I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. Now that you've seen these prices, I'm going to recommend we go ahead and list your home at 115. Will you list your home with me at that price today? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, great. Well, then all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get to Tuscaloosa in the time you want it. Wouldn't that be great? Sign the contract, okay? Very simple. Now, I know it's hard to believe, but sometimes they might actually disagree with you and want more. <laughs> Imagine that. I, I, I can't envision a, a, a circumstance where that would actually happen, but let's just pretend that they do. All right, let's say that they say, nah, you know, we want 130. Well, tomorrow we're gonna go over a way, it's called the objectionator, all right, the price you know, it's a lot of different names here for it, but I'm gonna show you how to shred that up so you can go ahead and get this listing at a price that will cause it to sell. Tune in tomorrow, I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day.